If, like me, you think your problems are overwhelming, then look at what other people have to face. Every successful person has faced difficulties in their life and career. My guests will share with us the challenges they have overcome on the road to success. Every week we'll follow their story right here in Life with me, Patty Boulay. Hello, welcome back to me, to Life with me, Patty Boulay. Well, actually, this is my second week interviewing His Holiness Radnat Swami. And his Holiness is one of today's most loved, respected spiritual teachers of our time. He has been a monk for 40 years, and his guru, Prabhupada Swami, started a midday meal model in India, which now serves 1.2 million meals every single day in seven states of India to underprivileged children. Your Holiness, when we first met, I, I have to say this because we met at the House of Lords. <laughs> I was going to speak on spirituality and my husband Stephen was going to speak on spirituality and finance. And as we arrived, you arrived straight from the United States after your meeting with President Obama. And then you spoke for 45 minutes on spirituality. <laughs> That kind of shot my, my speech. I'm going, I am not speaking after His Holiness on spirituality. And then it was a magical something happened, I think, because I didn't know at the time. It was pretty... It was the Bhaktivedanta's 40th anniversary. And as we arrived, I hadn't actually looked at anything because we were so busy. But as God will have it, I told the story of how I started in show business because I thought I'm not talking about spirituality. I thought, let me tell the audience about me. And my first job was in hair, singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And the whole room started singing. <laughs> and I thought, they know it. <laughs> that was just the stupidest thing for me because <laughs> I should have known. I thought, gosh, they know it. And it was wonderful. Everybody started singing. I'm going, this is good. They know this song. And then, of course, then we spoke to you, my husband and I. And since then, it, it has been such an honor to be guided by you, to speak to you every time we see you. And today, on this program, I want to kind of speak about family um, because in the West, I think government rules have taken over or government intervention have taken over the roles of family. They now have, you know, even so far they have old people in homes. The government takes care of the whole, old people, not the children that they have brought up. I, when I grew up, you had to look after your elders. They've looked after you. They've sacrificed their life to look after you. When they're old, it is your place to look after them. And it's interesting that in the old people's home, you never see an Asian, which is wonderful. And so when I had a, an opportunity to go to India on a TV program called the real Marigold Hotel. They had eight celebrities. We all had to choose a topic that we want to, something we want to find out or really highlight about India. I was the only one to say spirituality, respect for the elders. Because I say it's one place of the world where it still exists. I know they, they have problems because the internet has come in. Everybody else chose poverty and caste system and all sorts of things like that. But unfortunately, when I got there, they really were not interested in the spirituality bit or the respect for the elders. Ah, Swamiji, even I, I may call you that. Now, my question is, my quest is, how do we get family 
values back in a real family values where parents have responsibility for their children and children have responsibility for their parents thank you patty for allowing me to be with you again I, i'm so grateful because since i've known you i have seen that everything you do is always an expression of of your deep care for people and you make so many sacrifices and you're so brave <laughs> to express you know that care like really trying to help people thank you thank you one time i was going through a lot of trials in my life because everyone does mm -hmm. whether you're living for a spiritual purpose or a material purpose or anything else the nature of the world is there's going to be challenges yes. there's going to be setbacks because just like there's two sides of a coin in america we call it heads and tails mm -hmm. so similarly life is like a coin and wherever there's happiness the other side is distress there's health there's disease honor dishonor pleasure pain success val failure yes. birth death yes, it's death. a world of dualities yes. and that coin is always going to flip over and there's not that much we can you do can about, do about it. it however much we know however much we have <clears throat> but there's a little space between the heads and the tails the rim <laughs> yes <laughs> and in that place we actually find balance and that's very important that balance between people the the balance the harmony between the body the mind and the spirit that's the place where our relationships can can be real can be fulfilling and can be sustainable and it begins with family mm. i remember when i was in this very kind of difficult stormy time of life i decided to walk a, take a walk through a redwood forest in northern california just to kind of get away from people and while i was there i heard a forest ranger talk about the underground secret of the redwood forest. He said these trees are some of the oldest and largest trees in the world. Some of them are a thousand years old or more. And over this time there has been storms, earthquakes, blizzards. How do they keep growing? And the secret was that all the roots of the redwood trees are reaching out to connect with other redwood trees and the roots when they touch each other they wrap around and give support he said in this way every redwood tree in the forest is directly or indirectly connected and supporting every other redwood tree wow. the unity is the strength and that's the idea of community that's the idea of family we all have our differences it's very important that there's a higher principle in which we're united when i was a little boy i think i was 8 years old my mother told me i was sitting on her bed she was putting some mascara in front of a mirror and she said everyone loves your father and so many people love me <laughs> she said but your father and me don't love each other anymore and we decided to separate as an 8 year old little child that was inconceivable it was like an earthquake in my mind it seemed like the whole world just disappeared under me and i was just falling into a void I didn't know how to process it. I started to cry. I stood up. 
I ran down the stairs, I ran out the door, I ran down the block, and I ran into a forest. And my mother was devastated. And I waited hours until my father drove home from work, and I knew she was going to tell him about it. So when they were in their bedroom together, I secretly put my ear to the door. <laughs> they didn't know I was there. Don't tell them. <laughs> And my mother explained to my father how their decision to separate had affected me. There was total silence. And I heard them say, for the sake of our children, we have to work this out. And it wasn't easy for them. Yeah. But as time went on, I saw a love and a dedication that developed between them that's very rare to see. That love, that affection, was not just a romantic experience. It's something they earned by remaining faithful on a higher principle, a higher principle than just their disagreements or their egos. Mm. And seeing that sacrifice of love is so much of what gave me values in my life to actually make sacrifices to help others. And when my mother passed away, they were married 58 years, and they were like one, one heart and two bodies. So there's, and, and this is not just the immediate family, but in communities also. We have something to learn from what Mother Nature is teaching us through yes. those redwood trees. We need each other. We need each other. We need community. In our tradition, there's three principles, satsang, sadhana, and sadachar. It's important that we have like-minded people, people who could actually elevate our consciousness. So many times in the world today, especially the youth, feel hopeless, feel lost, confused, because there's such a, an impersonal environment around people. It's, it's important that, as you said, elders, elders and family, elders and people who, who actually, it could come from books, it could come from, from friends, from teachers, people who, who infuse us with a positive spirit, a yes. spirit where there's hope, a spirit where there's meaning. And that is called satsang, where we're seeking the association of enlightened people, people who have experience to help us navigate our way in a very positive way through life. And then sadhana means to put some time a day aside for a spiritual practice. Oh. We chant God's names, prayer, meditation, worship. There's different types of spiritual practices. A time to, to connect with, with our own conscious self within. A time to connect with, with God, the beloved, the supreme within. And that gives us the strength to actually connect with others on a, on a very meaningful way. And sadachar means to put into our life the gifts that we receive from our elders and from our own spiritual experiences. Sadachar could be translated as living with character, living with integrity. And the result of that is seva, where we find that the greatest joy to the heart is to serve. To actually, yes. in, to actually uplift others in whatever way we can, whether we're small or whether we're big, by the world's calculation is not important. No. What's important is the sincerity of our intent. <sighs> Swamiji, there is, in what you've just said, that two things, there's the, the trinity in life, I've always believed, because obviously in the Catholic religion, they have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm. I've always translated it as 
life is a trinity. Therefore, in my marriage, there's my husband, myself, there's God. There's me, my, my child, there's God. It's that rim you were talking about. So you flip the two sides of the coin, but there's the rim that holds those two sides together. And to me, it's like, you know, your employee and yourself, you have to answer to God. Your employer and yourself, you have to answer to God. Like the Bible said, you serve as if you're serving God. That is something that is missing in marriages, why they do not last, because the tradition I come from, it doesn't necessarily, if you don't know about God, it's usually an elderly person that both of you respect who actually then mediates in times of trouble. That is lacking. Now what we have is suicide rate among young people under the ages, especially young men under the ages of 35, is greater than people, young men killed by cancer or car crashes or illness. Suicide is the highest rate. And it's, I think it's due to what you have just said about the passing down of knowledge, which is why we started this program is inviting people who've had experiences to tell the young people especially life is tough but you are created to be tougher that they have had this experience which they can pass down to the younger generation because in the west i'm finding people you know even uh, just talking about celebrities People pass away and have passed nothing down because they are looked on as being old fashioned. They're dismissed as being passe. Um, what's the word they used to describe old people? Senile. And I'm thinking in that senility, there is special gem in there that has grown through life that you can grab from there. The suicide rate, what I want to know is how, because I know young men feel displaced with the feminist movement, which started to get women rights, and now it has gone out of control so that they're displacing young men. I hear women speak, and I think, do you have a son? When did your son, your uncle, your father become an enemy? Are you thinking of what you're saying? Number two, they want to be like men. And I'm thinking, well, you don't know how to be a woman. How are you going to be comfortable being a man when you're not yet? Because if you know how to be a woman, then you will understand the power that God has given you. As a woman, I feel most powerful. It's a woman like me that gives birth to everyone on earth. Mine. It's the first voice they hear. That is powerful. That comes with great responsibility. When you leave that and you want to step into, I don't mind a woman wanting to, my mother was a powerful woman. I was a seventh of her nine children. She was not educated, but she educated us to university level. She ran businesses. businesses. She brought us up on our own. Father was in political asylum in Ghana. That woman brought us all up, and she gave me the strength that I have. And she told me, no one is more special than you. No one is lower than you. And she said, you have one strength, and that comes from Jesus. You know, I would call her and say, Mommy, I love you. And she said, I love you, baby, but Jesus loves you more. I'm thinking, this woman can take a bullet from me. If Jesus loves me more than she does, He's got to be for me. <laughs> he's he's got to be the greatest. But you see, the young men, I, 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 I know people are going to be upset about this because I feel that the women have lost their place. My father used to say, I may be the head of this family, your mother is the neck. And without the neck, I think the head will fall off. They don't realize how strong they are anymore. And if they could find that strength again, these young men will not be lost. Because there's another thing that I say, for a young man it is confusing. You are 
you were in your mother's stomach for nine months. You heard her voice. You come out, you respect her voice as she brings you up. But then you grow up and you have to marry her. And then you have to bed her because that's what a woman is. And I say to the women, you need that dignity so that he would know where he stands. Because that voice that he heard first in his life was a woman's voice. So when he comes, you need to be a powerful woman in the right way for him. You need to be his backbone because that's what you are to your sons. Your daughters have their own gifts because God has already informed, you know, I mean, they have a weapon in one hand <laughs> and a tool in the other. A good woman is built like that because she will bring up and protect the children, her sons and her daughters. But we have lost that. And I try to tell women and try to bring the Trinity in so that they know that it's them, their son and God, them, their daughter and God, them, life and God. You have to answer to the universe because there's a purpose. They don't even want to carry babies to full birth, full term. They want the baby cut out of them so they can retain their figure. I don't know where we're going. I am lost. I'm as lost as the young men. But how to, to get them to have somewhere to go to where they can talk? Is there any such thing that can be done so young men can, you know, just to know they're not alone? <laughs> you said a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good or bad? It's wonderful. <laughs> oh, thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you. Because, thank you know, I don't know where they should go, what we can do, what, because I feel for the young men. I feel for the young men. Because in the West, everybody says, you know, women have been put down for a long time, but the generation that did that have gone. It, it, it's a cycle. A cycle. That has taken place over the ages within our societies that it's reciprocal as we were explaining last week about the different organs of the body they mm -hmm. have different functions but they all appreciate respect and harmonize with each other so each and every one of us as a child of God is unique and forever very very special but when we forget how special we are, and this understanding how special we are does not create arrogance. It actually awakens more humility because we're grateful for what we have been given. And we show our gratitude by sharing what we're given. Mm -hmm. Whether it's little or small doesn't really matter. What matters is that we understand our connection with our soul, with God, and with each other. So over the ages, you know, the female um, parts of society has often been disrespected, mm -hmm. abused, exploited. So naturally, you know, if you don't recognize, if the men don't recognize and respect the value and the greatness of, of the women, then there's going to be a reaction because everybody is looking for that feeling of being valued, valued. giving value to our life. And, um, and then when that's not there, then the men are not feeling valued. Feeling valued, yes. And I don't think it's a matter of just sociological um, conflict between the male and female race, I think what where it really comes down to is to understand that we're, we're all sacred parts of God. We all are sacred souls and to give value, to give respect, to give care is, and when that's there, then everybody can feel happy in their natural roles. Thank you so much, Your Holiness. Thank you.
thank you so much for being with me this week and for sharing these words of wisdom. And you heard His Holiness. You are very special. Just know how special you are. Because if you know how special you are and how much you are loved and how specially you are created, then you will find that humility that comes from just being loved so much by God and know, knowing that you are loved by God. Just remain special and find how, how special you are because there isn't a, a single soul that God has created that is not special. I know you join me in thanking His Holiness for joining us this week as well as last week. God bless you and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much, Your Holiness. Thank you, Patty. Thank you.